because that's what Dylan Brooks was doing. Also, Dylan Brooks was clearly a scapegoat for a lot of the big time stuff, which is, you know, so he got his nice, it was, this is one of those situations, it's like it's working out for everybody. Dylan Brooks gets to go get paid, be appreciated, put up good numbers, and show I wasn't the problem. Sure, Marcus Smart isn't upset that Jaws not coming back because that definitely means more playtime for him for the rest of the year. Uh, I went to a house party. Good times? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. What did you get up to? Um, went by my mother's house and go chill out. My brother was there and and uh, one of my buddies came over with his wife. So we just nice. chill, sit back, watch basketball. Nice low-key night. Yeah, low-key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can and I will though, even though situation looking kind of ill, yo. Yeah. Came to me like a song yeah. I wrote. Yeah, 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 Tape, ski mask, yeah. pillowcase, and rope. Yeah. Yo, the problem for situations like this, I'm up in this broad, I know he ain't gonna like this. Dark to him, put a spark to him, arms, legs. I even quit all my mother and whole boy. Big Frankie, man, fix your death with the code at. It's the back tap. You ever have a grown man call you Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> he called him Christmas. Shannon, you, you ever have a grown man call you Christmas? No, 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 sir. No, 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 sir. <laughs> First of all, he didn't do next Friday because he, he in the church. He don't even smoke, smoke weed like that. <laughs> he didn't be hanging out with Michael Jackson. Poor Cat Williams, man. Too smart for his own good. Yeah. Too smart for his own good. I even brought all my mother holes for you. Jay Cleasy. I don't think there's anything else I've watched on YouTube that has 42 million, 42 million views in like five days. Yeah, and that's that long. And that's that long. You know, like, yes, exactly. You know, like, it's like a proof of concept that maybe our attention spans are only as far as we're entertained. Yeah. So, yeah. That's like three hours. Brother? Appreciate you. Yes, man, every time. Mm -hmm. Have a good one. I had a million one-liners from that fucking interview. Holy moly. <laughs> and, and, and they're very poignant. Yeah, they are. They are. Hey, he's got such a good point of view on a lot of things, of man. Course. But it's just like the... Um, <laughs> it's just like... I, I'm a big golfer, right? I'm big into golf. So like yeah. was, the jokes he made about golf, uh, it's so funny because... Like, what did he something say? like that. So Shannon shows, you golf, you golf. And then he's like, I'm a very good ga golfer. He's like, my ha my short game is incredible, right? And then he says something like, uh, do you play from the tips? And what that means is do you play from the furthest tees? So there's like three or four tees that you can play from, right? Mm -hmm. So based off of your level, mm -hmm. the closer you are, like mm -hmm. the easier it is, right? Mm -hmm. So then the further you move back, like whatever, it's harder. 
So then the lady sees are always at the front, which is what they call the lady sees or the red tees, right? Yeah. So he makes a joke about like, so I don't play from the tips. He's like, it's the same amount of money if I play from the from the front or play from the back. But the way he, I can't remember, he used this one term that was so funny. He's basically saying, he's like, what difference does it make? Like, I'm, he's like, why would I go all the way back? I'm paying the same amount to, to be even closer, <laughs> right? Like, it's just, it's so funny. But like, like his views, like you yeah, say, but yeah. just something as simple as that, yeah. he's got a point of view that people don't see it from a certain perspective and he can call it like it is, right? So mm. that's fucking jokes. Mm. Yeah, I haven't even actually seen the whole thing. I've maybe seen the first but it's super cool that you got that. Half. You know, you got yeah, that yeah, exactly. Out of it, right? Of how the perspective that you get to view right, it from, exactly. You know? But it was just so. I hear it. it so I hear funny. it. I heard that section. Yeah, but it didn't resonate with because me. you're not a golfer, right? right like it's, but, yeah, it's jokes. Yo, load it up. Play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm thinking. Hold on. Point me around here. I'm thinking about, I don't want to grow my hair, but I want to keep it longer at the top. Okay. Back so to maybe just, two? just yeah, leave it. Leave it right now. Or whatever, maybe number two. What do you have me on normally? Um, one I longest? We've been going down to one. Yeah, we, we originally started at number at two. two. Oh. So you always, always remember, right? Let's go to two. All Let's right. take it on a two. I don't know if it's long enough for a two yet, but. All right. My hair's not as thick and bountiful as it was once one day. Mm. I caught like an angle at the top of my head. Yo, yo, I need to grow that out, bro. <laughs> parts of my scalp I haven't seen before. I shouldn't be seeing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you. I didn't think I was going to see you for another 20 years. <laughs> it's time. <sighs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm coming for you. It's time. It's like that meme with the Spider-Mans and they're all looking at each other. <laughs> what other things from that cat interview stood, stood out to you? That was like a big thing. And just kind of him like going at all the, the different comedians and stuff. Like mm. he's, he's so witty too, right? And I mean, I haven't had a chance to, I haven't seen the whole thing. Okay. But just the way... I don't know. Certain things, it's like, uh, he talks about uh, the reading the 3,000 books or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, it's just like, okay, you're, obviously you're a bullshitter. But then other times, it's like, oh, no, he's not bullshitting, right? right. So it's like, you don't know what, right. you know, there's certain things you can take from it, certain things you can't. But, right. like, when you, when you hear, like, just, again, the example of the golf thing is just when you hear him saying, like, a golfer, a, a golfer... Uh, somebody who doesn't golf can't make a comment like that, mm -hmm. right? So when you say, I've got an incredible short game and I play a lot of golf, but then you make a comment like that, I'm like, yo, this motherfucker knows what he's talking about, mm, right? So right. it's like, when you say the 3,000 books thing, it's like, yo, you're fucking all over the place. But, but then, other times it's like, well, maybe he's not, right? Right. But you see, when he says the 3,000 books now, mm -hmm. maybe we just take it in, you know, like hyperbole. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Just like and uh, also, exaggerating. And then also, you're like, when you, when you listen to him speak, there's a lot of words that he uses that For you're like, sure. what? Yeah, his vocabulary is really good. He, that's 3, his, yeah, that's 3,000 books worth of really vocabulary. Yeah, 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 for sure. No, you're right. <laughs> is, yeah, he's just like, to, to, he's exaggerating to make a point, right? Right, right. So, but it's not like, you know, you obviously he has a storied past and shit, right? But like, all of his fucking, his stand-up, any stand-up I've seen, I haven't seen them all, Yeah, is fucking hilarious. Mm. And it's like, because to me, good comedy is like, you can take a story or a scenario, but see it from a point of view that nobody was really looking at it from. Mm -hmm. And then it makes you sit and think like, yo, that's a good, that's, it's funny because it's true. Or it's funny because I never looked at it that way. And it's, you know, he's got a lot of takes on things that see it from different perspectives that when you sit back and then you start to see all the clips that come up, you're like, oh shit, this guy is fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like, this guy's a genius, right? I don't know, man. Like, when I see things like, like, to me, Chappelle's 
my goat for comedy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe previous generation, people would have said Pryor, people would have said Eddie. I just felt like Eddie didn't have enough of a body of work. But, like, when you see Dave, and you look at from, say, like, Killing Them Softly, right? Like yeah. His early, early stuff. Hilarious. Probably some of the funniest, like, mm -hmm. punchline jokes to where he's at now. Yeah. Is he's just... He has such a great perspective on the takes and the things that are happening around him. Yeah. That you don't see it in that way. And mm -hmm. it's so wildly genius, but he still has a way of hitting those punchlines like he did in his earlier mm -hmm. specials, right? So, I don't know, man. Just a lot of his, like, he's a very intelligent guy, right? He was born and raised by, like, two teachers or, like, whatever. Like, he's a smart guy. So to be a good comedian, comedian with those takes, like, you're not just, you know, this run-of-the-mill person who doesn't have, you know, knowledge in a lot of different areas, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I think Cat Williams also has, right? Like, Cat's got those, that perspective and, you know, the, the takes on certain things and he sees it in a very intelligent way. But, I don't know, his whole thing too is like, Maybe he came off a certain way and people felt, you know, a certain ways from him right. telling some hard truths. But mm -hmm. were, were those true? Probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. Either way, that was a very entertaining for what I've seen so far. <clears throat> yeah, I did not expect it. Like, I had it playing in the well, shop while I was putting here one day. And then you were dying. Yo, you had it. I think it was the day it came out. It was last week, right? Mm -hmm. I came in, but I had L with me. And oh. you didn't play it. You started playing it. Oh, okay. And I think you paused it because she was with me, oh, right? Okay, I was okay. just like, okay. I was like, what is this? And then when I got home, mm -hmm. that's all I saw. Like later that night, that's all I saw in my the social media feed. Just everybody was posting clips from it, talking about it, like... Yeah, like even for me, like um, I did a couple of clips referencing that that interview, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I posted it on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, um, my YouTube. Yeah. That's the first thing. It's the first time I've ever hit like twenty thousand views. Whoa, for real? Yeah. It was it was your take on 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 that interview? Yeah. Yo, that's crazy, bro. Five thousand. When I when I hit when I hit thirteen hundred views, yeah, I was like, whoa, yeah, guy. That's, I close my eyes and wake up the next day. It's fifteen thousand. Like, whoa, yo, that's crazy. So, what is that video at now? Like in the twenties? Twenty three thousand. Damn, so that's sick. So, Cat Williams is polarizing. Like yeah. he's, he's he's controlling the internet. Yeah. And he has people. He has people talking. You know, like it's crazy. He's controlling so, the ethos right now. So before that interview, mm -hmm. what was he doing recently that made Sharp have him on? Like, well, was there some, was he is he releasing something or is he like is no, he promoting I, I guess, anything? I guess what happened is, is Sharp um, apparently has been trying to get him on for years. Oh, and then it just happened. And then, and then, um, I guess maybe Cat got in touch with him and said, yeah, "I'm free this weekend." Da 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 da. Yeah. And then Shannon was like. To his team, hey, let's do it. Whatever we got, cancel it. Yeah, let's do this. Cat said he's coming in. And now look at it. Crazy. 42 million views, bro. That's wild. It's quick, man. Quick, yeah. <laughs> what is his stand up? The one he's in the green suit. Mm. How are you talking about Pimp, is it Pimp is it Chronicles? Pimp Chronicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was one. That shit is fucking hilarious. You know, like, who was so good and, like, ended up passing was... Uh, did you ever watch Patrice any... Patrice O'Neal? Yeah, did you watch any Patrice stuff? Yeah. Man. Oh, man. He was so good. I think the first time I saw him was... Uh, Remember he did like the nasty show, so that's where like he was always big in the like New York scene, you know, whatever, okay. like U.S. whatever. Mm -hmm. 
But I guess this was at a time, like, I think early 2000s. Like, nobody had specials out, right? Mm -hmm. So they did that. Did you ever see The Nasty Show? Um, I don't know. So um. it was uh, a bunch of comedians. It's a show, and I think it was at a Just for Laughs. Yeah. And it was, like, meant to be, like, friggin', like, really dirty comedy, mm -hmm. right? So then they had guys do, like, 15-minute sets. And his set was, like, just talking about all these, like... <laughs> That fucking hilarious, like, sexual terms, right? Yeah. Like, the Cleveland steamer, the chicken cutlet, <laughs> like, all these fucking things, bro. It is so... He goes on for fucking the whole set. It is so funny, bro. It is unreal. So, then that's when I first caught wind. I'm like, yo, my 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 boy sent me... Um, no, we were, like, we... <laughs> I'll never forget it. We were... We blazed this flip, and he put it on, because it was on, like... Um, like TMN, TMN On Demand or something like that. Because uh -huh. I think it was like an HBO thing or whatever, right? Okay. And we put it on and we were blitzed and we were watching it. And we, I, bro, I don't think I've laughed that hard like in my life. <laughs> so then I caught wind of that and then like kind of like was on the lookout for him. But I never seen a special until years later. He had like... Um, the elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah. And I think I saw it on YouTube. Like I don't even think I saw it on like a DVD or something. Like I don't know yeah. where I saw it. But yeah, YouTube I saw it. Yeah, and then you just kind of see his stuff come around. But like he's the next dude, right? He doesn't give a fuck. No. He's got wicked takes on things, yeah. right? Like, I don't know. To me, that's what I think like... I'm not huge into the like slapstick comedy where it's like punchline one-liners and then that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm all about like the, the comedians that like make you think about shit, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see a guy like Bill Burr, right? Like, mm -hmm. You know, at first people want to say like, oh, Bill Burr is a fucking chauvinistic, sexist, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. type guy. And it's like, well, listen to his takes, right? Like one of the fucking, <laughs> one of his bits. And this is like, I tell this to my wife all the time, because me and my wife fucking, we joke about, like, she loves Bill Burr, right? Mm -hmm. One of his takes was like, you know, women always have, and again, verbatim, I don't want to fucking butcher this, but he's like, you know, women will always say they want equal pay for women in, the, in, in, in sports, yeah. right? So the WNBA women yeah. should be making as much as, 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 the, the, the male men. counterparts. Right, their counterparts, their male counterparts, right? And then he has, like, he, whatever, he has, like, whatever, a bunch of the takes, but then he goes out and he says, okay, women, name me five WNBA players. Okay, okay, no, how about name me five WNBA teams, right? So Jeez. then he goes on and on about you want them to get paid or equal, right, but you're not willing to support them. Right. Right? So he's like... That's, he's like, it's a game of money, right? It's like, we're watching them, supporting them. What about the WNBA? You're not watching and supporting them as well? Like, so anyways, he just has like these funny takes. You guys should be in the stand with your shirts off. Yeah. <laughs> Painting your faces. Painting your faces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's funny. I'm just, and, and like. But then you sit back and watch Housewives all day <laughs> yeah. and then wonder why they're so paid. Yeah, exactly, right? But anyway, so just that hot take, like he just sees it in a different mm -hmm. perspective, right? Big, makes big sense. He just makes big sense. And it's like, that's, those are the, the comedians I like. Like, these fucking jokes. I'm not huge into the politics, like the political comedians. Mm. Eh, I could fucking care less about politics. George, though I should George, probably be George, a little bit more George into Carlin? <laughs> well, like, the thing is with Carlin. Okay, Carlin talked about politics at a time where, you know, nobody was making comedy about par uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Carlin in his heyday in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, even up to the early 90s, mid 90s, mm -hmm. all of his takes, guy, he was he was fucking sick. If you watch his shit, mm -hmm. he had very futuristic views on a lot of his takes and mm -hmm. yeah, he talked about politics, but then he talks about like a whole bunch of other things as yeah. well, right? A lot of fucking popular comics reference him as one of their, you know, one of their goats, right? Like he's up there, man, like yeah. It's crazy too, because like even Cosby back in the day, Cosby mm -hmm. was so fucking massive as well. But he was more of slapstick, a lot of uh, a lot of punchline, one liners type thing. But he did have like good takes on a lot of his. What was that one special he had? Uh, it was on vinyl. I can't remember, but I think a lot of them were on vinyl back then. But I don't know. I'd like to talk to you <laughs> about the things that you do in your shirt. But it's, isn't it 
crazy. Like if you look at some of the top like podcasts in the world right now, mm -hmm. it's all comedy podcasts, like ran by comedians, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of their time in the sun right now, right? Like comedians are making fucking dollars. brought life to streaming services. Yeah, big time. Big time. And they're the ones who like help push Netflix, mm -hmm. right? Mm You don't know where that's from. Uh, sorry. I'm... <laughs> I'm just having some fucking baseball shit I gotta deal with. What's going on there? We're at a, uh, like a indoor facility in where? Ajax on, on Thursdays. Like, so tonight from 5.30 to 7.30, right? Where on McKenzie? Dude, I'm the worst. I just follow my GPS. By the Burger King? It's literally where Ajax Go Station is. Ajax Go. Do you know where that is? I think it's like near church and... No. Is it on Bailey? It's... I think, yes. It's Bailey and like uh, Kingston. Bailey That's maybe Kingston. the close... Oh, no, or Bailey and 401. Right there. Okay, so it's on Bailey and 401. Okay, so you're telling it's, me... It's here. I'll show you. Let me just bring it up. Frank Hom Street is what it's on, and it is, okay. where is this? Westney, my bad. Between, yeah, so like, uh, right here. Westney and Bailey, or 401 in Westney. It's a big place? It's not huge, it's low ceilings, so this is a deal. Mm -hmm. There's an indoor turf section, which is like 80 by like 90, mm -hmm. right? pretty good but it shares and it's low ceilings so the ceilings are probably about like maybe this high it shares like another maybe 30 by by 80 space with like a workout gym right mm. so that's cool but the workout gym the guy who books it is booking full teams in there so mm. they'll have like a team of like a girls hockey team and mm. they'll work out They'll rip the music really loud, mm -hmm. and then they'll do things like they'll do like soccer keep ups at mm -hmm. the beginning as a warm up, mm -hmm. and they're so, it's so loud, bro. Mm -hmm. Between the music and the people screaming, mm -hmm. I can't instruct my kids, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like trying to tell my kids, they're like, "What? I can't hear you, right?" Mm -hmm. So it's it's just proving to be difficult, and and we've talked to them about like you know possibly lowering the volume, but what can you do? The the fundamental issue is that he's booking. At one point, he had two other teams in there. There were 65 people in this low ceiling facility, mm -hmm. and it's all open. And I'm trying to talk to 12 kids, and kids, they're nine years old. Mm -hmm. If you, a, a fucking piece of shiny foil rolls across her, that takes her attention away, mm -hmm. let alone looking at 40 people in a gym, right? Mm -hmm. Blasting music, screaming, and like the teams are like, they'll stand there and watch the kids. So it's like, I have like, which I don't, this I don't mind. Like, I'm, I'm soft tossing the kids and they're hitting. And like they'll go and they'll hit. And then if a kid like misses, like, oh, if a kid hits it, I'm like, yeah. So them doing that, like, one of my kids was like, I don't want to hit in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, they're nine years old. I get it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, step up, let's go. Yeah. Just deal with it. It doesn't matter. This is how baseball is, right? Yeah. But then again, it, we're at practice. It's different in a game, right? We're mm -hmm. at practice. If a kid doesn't feel comfortable to do it, I'm like, yo, what am I supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I'm having issues, so I'm trying to 
move to a next spot. You find a spot? Can't find a spot. Like, I have to shift er to an earlier time. You can't find a spot or, or, or all the spots that you can find are not available? That, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. I do have a spot, but I got to shift the time. It's, but it's in Stouffville, which is good, but mm. anyways. It, it's just, that's what I'm dealing my with. My son right. trains at a facility. Where is it? In Ajax, on, at, um, get off at Westney. Yeah. Get off at West, Westney and Bailey. Yeah. To What's the name of it? Um, Pure Strength? No. Um, it's on Mackenzie Drive, though. Oh, okay. Can you send me the name of the spot? Let me take a look real quick. But like, so like they have the they have the, the meshing, you know what I mean? Inside where it looks yeah. like it looks like it's they do baseball there, but then my son does soccer there. Yeah, but so looks, there's soccer in the spot that we're at. But too. it looks like it's for baseball. For baseball, because there's no yeah. nets or nothing like that for soccer. Right, no, no soccer nets. Hmm. But do they have netting you can pull across like to there's make? Net, there's netting for base. So it looks like it's for baseball. Okay. Because even in, oh, is it even, called prospects? Say, send me the spot. I, I, even on their like when you walk in. Like it's basically a baseball it's a baseball, baseball spot. It's a baseball facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the problem is, it's the times, right? That's fucking three seventy-seven Kenzie. Competitive edge. The competitive edge. Oh, there's no. This is it? Mm. This is a, oh, what the fuck is this? I don't even know. Yes, yeah, same, same. The same. This is the plot. This That's the spot. This, this spot. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, pictures of what it looks like inside? Oh, this? Mm -hmm, just like That's this, it? exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a baseball spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this shit doesn't move when they're playing soccer. Like, they're, like, running all over on top of that shit. And what, so those, those nets don't move? Like here? No, they're in there playing with the nets in there. Mm -hmm. With those, like, those long nets? No, 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 no. Oh. I guess those will pull back, I guess. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You know, it's, he's kid, the guy can hold me to the contract I signed. Mm. But and then I can fucking play the game of like, what you sold me is not what we're getting. Mm -hmm. So he said he could put up all those nets and be able to make four lanes. They're broken. Only one of them works. Mm -hmm. So now I have one lane and then one open spot. Mm -hmm. And then at UIT, where my son used to train at the indoor facility there. What's UIT? Um, University of Ottawa, I mean Oshawa, or whatever. Okay, there's a spot in there. So uh, sometimes I see some kids training, training baseball there. And that's like a big soccer dome. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen it now that I, I remember. Yo, the East End mm. has everything for sports. Everything, hockey, baseball, mm -hmm. soccer, football. Like around here, mm -hmm. bro, we do not have a football or a baseball facility. Like baseball specific. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think there's one 
that's not really rented out to the public in Markham. Mm -hmm. There's a couple in Vaughan and then one in Richmond Hill. And those belong to teams. Like, so the team play, you, mm -hmm. you got to work around that. But East End's got everything. So the fact that there's this next spot, like competitive, I haven't even heard of it. Mm -hmm. And I thought I fucking knew everything out there, out that way. Do you know how much they, they no. pay an hour? No, no, no. Oh, I guess that's with, who's doing it? Like coaches? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. What are you saying, man? You good? Yeah. Good, good.
You watch Saltburn? What's that? Did you watch Saltburn? No, what's that? Mm, the TV, uh, a movie on Amazon Prime. It was about. Wait, Amazon Prime? It was about um. This this kid who goes to private school and um, mm-hmm. befriends this rich kid, mm-hmm. and the rich kid then over the summer holidays invites him to come spend a holiday at his house, mm-hmm. and. Then the movie's just about how he interacts with the, how that guy now interacts with the entire family. Yeah. Right Saltburn? Okay. Take it out. Oh, I. Elle was in a TV show for, um, on the CBC. Mm hmm. I'll show you her clip. So this guy, his name is. Um, this guy, his name is DJ Demers. He's. Um, uh, a hard of hearing comic, mm-hmm. like stand up comedian, and he has his own show called One More Time. And this scene is he got dunked in a dunk tank, and his hearing aids he can't hear through it, so it's all muffled because it got wet. It's <laughs> How long has he been in? Just this is the first thing. You're too young to use a butter knife, yet they want to strap you to a couple blades that could cut clean through your Achilles tendon. It's scary. That's the best things in life are. That's it. So she got a. She had an agent. Uh, we have like a family friend who does commercials, mm-hmm. and she was like, "You should get L to go for commercials because forget." She's got a look, like a specific look that a lot of people are looking for, right? Mm-hmm. Like that kind of mixed look and whatever. Mm-hmm. So we weren't going to do it for the longest time. And then my, my wife uh, contacted this agent who's like good friends with our family friend. Just to talk about whatever it is. So send me a picture, like whatever. And then the agent's like, yeah, let's put something together. Put something together. And then she went out. And this was her first thing. She got she got it. Yeah. She put it out, did a read, and the reads now are like um, online. Mm-hmm. Like it's all like on Zoom or like where you send in like a reel or something. Yeah. Reading the lines. And then that's how they deal with it now. So she did it. It was like her first thing and she got it. And then she went on set and did that. And then sends her off for like a bunch of other things and she hasn't got anything since. Yeah. But like like she, we're not going so hardcore on it. Right, right, so right. Out of the ten, say they send us ten things, we'll maybe read for one of them. Like we don't want to go through the whole gamut of everything. Like she's so busy right now. Anyways, but like yeah, it came up and it was crazy. So we just debuted it was just on Tuesday. Sick. On Tuesday. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, yeah, thank you. So it was good. Like the TV shows and stuff are like. I guess she's not considered an extra. She's 